What's going on, everybody? Welcome to my podcast, Apply Pressure to Life, where I promote healing, engage in lifestyle and media perspectives, and exchange life stories on different outlooks on life. And today, I want to go ahead and start with me. I am just super excited to be able to start this podcast. It has been a long time coming um, when it comes down to this podcast. Um, I've been talking about wanting to do this for a really, really long time and have just used my circumstances of life to just stop me from actually pursuing what I want to do. And that just wasn't the way I could not continue to just have uh, all of my life lessons that I've been learning, especially in these last two years, um, which we'll definitely get into more as the podcast goes along. But I have learned a lot and have gotten to the point where I just cannot hold it in anymore. Uh, I definitely have um, a lot of cool moments with my clients, a lot of breakthrough moments, whether it's for myself or with my clients um, or just random people on the street and it's just time to finally just get into my story introduce myself um, hoping that my story definitely helps others just kind of break through and just get a different perspective of life so I wanted to utilize this first official true episode and just introducing myself So I'm going to get into it by introducing my name. My name is Nicole Bounds. I go by Nikki Diamond. That is something that I inherited from my stepdad, which first for me, it just kind of played off of my first and middle name, which is Nicole Dominique. Um, And the more I just kind of kept hearing the name Nikki Diamond, Nikki Dime, people who kind of played with it in high school. And I just kind of fell in love with the name, honestly. I can't really tell you how he came up with it. I'm just going to assume that it's because my name was Nicole Dominique. So that was just kind of the play on words. But um, I really just fell in love with the aspect of diamonds. Um, Of course, diamonds are popping. They're beautiful. The glitz and the glam. Everybody had a bejeweler at one point in their life. Um to the point where now I'm 32 years old and I have diamonds all encrusted in my teeth. I always wear crystals on my nails. I've gotten introduced to Swarovski's in the nail industry. So of course, diamond is part of the artistry of what I do. I even, when I paint and I do my canvas paintings, I incorporate glitter and diamonds in my paintings. And so, um, but ultimately what kind of got me attached to the name diamond was more of the aspect of how a diamond is made and how it's created and we all know that you know diamonds take years on years to develop Um, and of course after developing they become very expensive you know they're not easy to break but it's really the pressure that diamonds go through to become a diamond and that gives you the whole idea of you know, diamond in the rough, coals, things like that. And the longer, you know, I just kind of dwelled on what diamonds were and how they were developed, it just felt like something that we can all relate to. I think we all go through a lot of pressure in life um, that for most of us make us. For some, it does break us. Um, But I really was attached to the name because I wanted to be a representation of what life looks like with pressure and to show that I can be cut (laughs) with all the issues uh, and trauma or chaos that may, you know, enter in life, but I'm going to press right back and that is going to create me to be the diamond that I want to be. It's going to help me shine. And I know it's the same for everybody else. So I just fell in love with the name. But ironically, Nikki Diamond was supposed to be something that I did for fashion. Yeah, I was like into nails and doing hair and stuff like that. But I really thought I was a fashion designer. (laughs) Honestly, like even if I was like drawing and some people wanted me to do like tattoo concepts for them and stuff like that. 
um, I would actually sketch a lot of clothing designs and I named it Nikki Diamond Decor. That was supposed to be the idea of what Nikki Diamond Decor was, was plus size fashion. And I even got the honor to create, um, or at least design my prom dress which was lit because I'm I'm gonna be real with you guys going to David Bridal for as a big girl for prom is not it <laughs> they didn't have Fashion Nova I'm gonna just be a all the way honey with you uh I was not gonna wear something from Torrid okay uh Rainbow didn't have it so I had to get creative with it honestly and luckily there was a woman um uh, at my church who uh helped me uh, she she took me took me to get all the fabrics and uh, help me with my designing and things like that and it came out beautifully. I'm definitely gonna have to pull up some pictures so you guys can tap in and see those on uh, YouTube so you guys can see how it came out because for somebody who's never created before, I was actually impressed. But I'm gonna tell you that whole experience was like nah this is not for me <laughs> at all like I'm not about to do this this is not my steez like I can't imagine like trying to pick out fabric all day long like that's just not it so I just got to the point where uh, one of my homegirls in high school um which she was like my sister uh, anybody who knew us in high school just knew that we were just inseparable from pretty much 10th grade up to our 12th grade year and a little bit even afterwards um to this day I still love this girl we're not cool you know like that you know that's how the cookie crumbles sometimes but she definitely introduced me to a new lifestyle when I say lifestyle I mean getting into the beauty industry once again I've always wanted to do nails um always liked doing hair but I never saw black people doing nails at all didn't really see black people doing anything but hair um so cosmetology was not on my first list um when it came down to career but you know like I said I already went through the whole fashion thing for two seconds yes it was two seconds but my homegirl was like well we should just go to cosmetology school together you're already doing nails and practicing nails like maybe you should do it and at that time, I didn't see why not. Like, I was getting nail stuff for Christmas and my birthday and, you know, wanting to do everybody else's nails, make sure my nails was matching, you know, whatever, you know, football theme we had going on or spirit week. So I was like, you know what, F it. Like, I'm going to go ahead and just go to Cosmo School with her. That should be a nice, you know, nice little bonding time. Unfortunately, we didn't go to cosmetology school together. She ended up having um, a baby, my, my little baby, my first my first little baby. She was my goddaughter. and um, But I kept pressing. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to just go ahead, go ahead and go to beauty school. And that's just kind of how it started for me. Um, I'm from Mid-City, Los Angeles. Born and raised. Uh, was born in Culver City, Los Angeles. I uh, went to Hamilton High School, Daniel Webster Middle School, elementary, everywhere, <laughs> absolutely everywhere. Probably went to church schools up until third grade and then went to Crescent Heights Elementary School and then uh, Canfield Elementary School. Why I went to so many schools? I'm assuming that I moved a lot. It's kind of a blur. Um, but I know my mom wanted to make sure that I was comfortable and she kept me pretty sheltered. Um, so, you know, I, I moved a lot when it came down to my schooling, not necessarily the area, but my mom, she was raised right there off of uh, Rodeo in Los Angeles, Rodeo, Rodeo, whatever you want to call it. Um, they want to call it Obama Boulevard now to the real OGs. It's Rodeo, okay? <laughs> Um, she went to Autobahn, Dorsey, so we're literally like mid-city jungle area, but like I said, I was pretty sheltered, so, you know, I was in the Culver City area a lot, Hawthorne a lot, Carson, um, my church um, at the time was Clarence E. McClendon Ministries, um, and of course, anybody who knows about that church, we was definitely moving everywhere when it came down to that, so, you know, we We've been around when it comes down to the city, but you know, Mid City is definitely the area that I was raised in. Um, 
I live in Las Vegas now, uh, and it's been cool. You know, definitely love Las Vegas, 24-hour city. Been out here since 2016, and that is when I got to the point of where I was like, yeah, it's time for me to go ahead and get my own independence in this industry because I got my Cosmo license at 19, got into the actual industry um, by way of a girl who I met in beauty school um, maybe, I'll say close to a year after I graduated. I was 19 when I graduated. So I'll say about when I was 20 is when I got my first beauty uh, like salon job and I would hop from salon to salon to salon all through Beverly Hills, Brentwood, um, and some of just other preppy like little areas and just kind of realized that I wasn't getting as far as I would like to. And I'll just be honest. Let me just kind of pause the story right here. At that time frame, I definitely wasn't humbled <laughs> at all when it came down to like my career at all. Um, I felt like I was the spit um, after a certain amount of people that was gassing up my head and all of that. I, I just was like, okay, I'm not feeling this. I wasn't feeling, you know, certain people who were getting their license like after me, but was able to, you know, go ahead and go on certain trips and, you know, representing the company and all of that. And on the one end, I'm not going to lie to you. It, I, I honestly feel like it had to do with my culture and my ultimate look um on why I probably didn't elevate it the way that I wanted to in the nail industry at that time frame um but at the same time I didn't stay patient enough so my emotions at that time frame probably did block a lot of my blessings but I honestly just felt like you know I'm, I wasn't gonna get any further and I got pregnant at 25 so there was a salon that I was working with at that time uh, called the House of Polish. Still love them to this day, but that was one of the salons that I just felt like I wasn't going to get any further if I wasn't a certain look, you know, or if I wasn't just going to follow what everybody else was kind of doing or kissing ass or wanted to kind of be the groupy type and you know, I just got to the point where I was like, you know what, I want to move. I want to be able to get into my own space uh, with my dude and, you know, raise my daughter the way that I want to because my household was filled with two older women, my mom and my grandmother. And my grandmother, I was just assumed that she just thought because I was an only child that I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, when it came down to being a mom. Um, so it was very difficult as a new mom to figure out how to develop ultimately as a mom and then be in your industry and trying to figure out how to develop an industry. So I looked, 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 looked throughout Los Angeles and people know LA is expensive. It is expensive, like unnecessarily expensive. On one hand, you got the beachy areas, I get it. You pay for the scenery and the vibe. But there's other areas like the jungle and the hood. And for those who don't know what a jungle is, I mean, it ain't a jungle no more because they definitely cleared that out. But that was an area in Crenshaw District. And that back in the day used to be, what, a one bedroom? Could have easily be like 600, 800, maybe even 900. Now, 1500. 1600 damn near a thousand for a one bedroom you still gonna have to pay fifty dollars to a hundred dollars for a parking spot don't dare to have a pet you know what i mean and if you talking about your laundry nine times out of ten it's not gonna be in your household you know so i just got to the point where i was like you know what i'm not getting as far as i want to in my industry and in my career um, I'm not getting the space that I feel like I need to develop as a person and a mom. And at this time frame, me and my dude moved back in my mother and my grandmother's house. So it was just like, you know what, let's branch out. And we one day just decided we was going to come out to Vegas just for, you know, vacation. My dude didn't, uh, uh, you know, he hasn't been in Vegas as an adult. So we was just like, all right, let's just go ahead and spend some time in Vegas. And that was really a wrap. His birthday was in March when we came and visited. And uh, I want to say June of that same year on the 2016, 
we moved and that was just all she were we've been out here for about six years um started off at a couple nail salons and eventually just became an independent nail technician um you know outside of just being a nail technician being in vegas allowed me to go ahead and developed as an like a personal artist i got back into my canvas paintings um which is something that i'll continue to do and very soon i i want to be able to invest in getting into these vegas streets because they have like these light boxes that they have on the street that i, I definitely want to have an art piece with i just don't know how acrylic paint handles with concrete <laughs> or like walls and things like that because that's usually how i do my artwork but um yeah no i i really love vegas and what it has to offer there's definitely been a lot of life lessons um being here in vegas but ultimately one big thing that i have embraced and loved about being in vegas is um my independence uh, as a as as an artist and as a nail technician meeting my clients and having our one-on-one -on -one conversations have opened up a new avenue um, of career for me. And that's one reason why I have adapted into one and getting into podcasting, because a lot of our conversations that I end up getting with with my clients um, become more of a healing session. And for a lot of people who know hairstylists and nail technicians, barbers, we damn near are therapists, if not our therapists. Um, people genuinely trust their hairstylist and their nail technician and their barber with a lot of deep, dark secrets, intimate secrets, intimate stories, moments that have happened and developed in life. And it's a really safe place for people to just be transparent. And I appreciate my clients allowing them to be transparent with me, trust me with their with their hearts, um, being vulnerable, which in retrospect has helped me develop as a person. It's helped me learn better ways of communication, um, which I, I shout out to all of my clients, ultimately, especially the ones that are listening, who've known that I've been wanting to do this podcast for a really long time. And that will be part of the podcast, but definitely, you know, with those who want to, you know, share their stories and we'll get into certain conversations um, just to kind of make things abroad. But overall, you know, I, I've gotten the opportunity to practice my throat chakra and that's to allow me to start speaking more. And that for me has been a blessing. Um ultimately because in my family it's not that your opinion isn't welcomed but if it doesn't fall in line with how everybody else may think or you know say you have an opposite opinion or thought it would be considered um you know ruffling the feathers um, my mom, unfortunately, would tell me at times that, you know, certain things that I would talk about actually would create more chaos. Um, and I yearn for understanding. I yearn um, to understand how people tick. I've always been interested in how people operate, how people think, um, why they do what they do, why they say what they say. Um, why they deflect um, and it's the people who are transparent I those people I, I'm like you're transparent I appreciate it I, per, I personally you know desire that I'm a Taurus woman I'm bold and straightforward so you know I prefer anybody who has any type of emotions thoughts to go ahead and be transparent um, with me but I've learned in my 32 years that a lot of people just have a difficulty being transparent. I've learned in my 32 years that um, not only is it difficult to be transparent, that the deflection that happens sometimes um, based off of people's perceptions off of a situation or issue or a problem, 
that it now creates friction or tension or has people not liking each other because they people are misunderstanding and then we don't end up having patience and these are the things that I've started to learn and analyze as not only a nail technician or an artist but just as a as a person in general and so I have been yearning for a really long time to just go ahead and have a platform where I can break down the things that I have learned on top of just allow people to really uh, get to know my vibes, the real me outside of me just being a nail artist, really learning how to be transparent. Um, that's from the good, the bad, the beautiful, the ugly of my story because I know that my story amongst other people who have one um, can utilize this as a testimony and I'm a regular person just like you. Um, the only difference is, is that I understand God's purpose for me and what he needs when it comes down for what I'm doing. And um, I just want to be able to follow what God needs me to do, ultimately. And it starts here. So um, just to kind of give you some subsections about what to expect when it comes down to um, my podcast. Um, I stated healing is one of them. Um, I want to be able to help people with their breakthroughs. Um, and I do that by, one, of course, storytelling. Luckily, the things that I've gone through, or if I haven't gone through them personally, I've literally got to walk side by side with somebody who were going through similar things that other people may go through. And because I analyze a lot, um... I've gotten the opportunity to be more understanding. And I don't know if that has anything to do with my sign per se, um, but I do feel like I am very understanding when it comes down to people's hearts, their thought patterns, um, just, just almost anything that makes a person a person. I feel like I can be very understanding, um, but that's only when people are being uh, transparent Um, I can't really handle um, (laughs) where people are just kind of deflecting or not wanting to be honest on how they genuinely feel about things. Um, But I want to promote healing because ultimately that will allow us to get to the next part of what I would like us to get healing in, which is communication. Um, I want to say earlier of last year, an old neighbor of mine, who I've only gotten to know her less than a year, She gave me some really good advice because she knew that I was going through a lot in my personal relationship with my kid's father, who I'm technically married to. Um, We are always up and down. He is my life partner, someone who I'll probably be with until one of us is gone. But we have had a lot of issues, (laughs) a lot of arguments. Things have gotten really heated in our relationship. And unfortunately, certain neighbors would have heard what we have gone through in our past and she was one of them and one of the things that she said to me really changed the course of how I communicate and how I hear other people when they communicate whether it's with me or just in general Um, she said that there is always a way to say what you need to be said and it's okay for you to be transparent enough to say exactly how you feel but how you say it is everything. Now, we have all known it's not necessarily what you say, but how you say it. And I've, I've heard those statements before, but the way that she really broke it down to me was, it just clicked. It really did. And she used an example of her getting her hair dyed. She would do like a very ashy blonde type of look. And she went somewhere where she knew that the lady was not doing the application properly she's a cosmetologist she's been doing this look for many many years um so she already knew that the look was going to give her an ash look she wanted a bleach blonde look and 
the woman who's doing her hair is trying to convince her that she got it she knows what she's doing and of course naturally if you feel like you know whether you're a client or not just an experienced person and you see something's going wrong especially when it's on you or it's something that's yours and you got to pay for it you would naturally get upset right and that's what she said she was upset because by the end of the, the service it was an ash it wasn't even a bleach blonde like she want now for some of you who may be hearing this be like okay what does hair have to do with communication well i'll tell you ultimately she could have got upset she could have cussed the lady out she could have you know gotten irate some people who really like you know like i gotta walk my i gotta walk outside like this type instead of having a whole attitude where that wasn't gonna fix the issue she calmly told her like look i'm not happy i'm not happy with how this looks i I did know that it was going to come out in ash which is something that i mentioned um but i felt confident and you felt confident that you knew what you were doing and unfortunately it just did not come out the way that we both wanted and expected so we can either try to fix it or i will need to have my money back because this isn't the way that we agreed and in that story alone off rip just hearing how she said it just helped me realize that she has control over her emotions which is something else that i've gotten the the honor to learn that we get to choose our emotions our emotions they are valid but some sometimes most of the time our emotions are not accurate to what's really going on meaning like yes that was a moment that she could have been upset and she was but to be angry to the point of where she had to flip out or all that there would have been no solution in that problem but they were able to create a solution by having patience being calm learning a proper way to communicate and that is something that I am constantly like practicing especially when it comes down to one my kids I have an eight-year-old and a two-year-old and my son is crazy and Sagittarius and Gemini um on top of their father is pretty difficult because he has type 1 diabetes and type 1 diabetes on top of just diabetes in general does mess with the brain and messes with the mind because of the blood flow and with that being said a lot of times he's very forgetful and I do not like to repeat myself I don't know about you but I just don't like to repeat myself multiple times so with two kids and then a grown-ass man that I have to do that with is just like it's a lot but I'm constantly learning as a 32 year old when it comes down to this part of communication Um, And this brings me on to my next part of something that I'll be discussing a lot about is perception. And perception is basically, you know, there's your truth, there's my truth, and there's there, there is the truth. And we can get to a solution. But the only way we can get to that solution ultimately is if we, one, have patience, learn how to put the shoe on the other foot, and being able to look at it from a different perspective when it comes down to certain situations at hand and that should help calm down a lot of issues at hand and that's only if you're choosing to want to have understanding wanting to have patience you know don't want to have chaos in your world or lifestyle um so these are all things that can help start the healing process is having the understanding of perception and getting to a better place of communication Another thing that I'll be discussing in my podcast is bloodline. Um, Bloodline is ultimately where I believe family curses lie. Um, It's not necessarily just about your last name and carrying on the last name. Um, You know, the words blood uh, in that word bloodline is very powerful, very deep. Um you know in the spiritual realm it is known that the blood in mankind in spirituality is this most powerful thing outside of our words um and this is where i believe that our family curses fall in line with and why they travel the way that they do in our lifestyles 
if you may notice that like whether you know your father or you know your mom but you get a, a any type of inclination of who they used to be that you realize that you didn't even have to meet this individual and realize that you got tendencies of this person and that is because their dna is part of who you are and if you get the opportunity to understand what's in your bloodline then you actually have a better chance in really knowing how to get to a point of breaking those curses because a lot of us who are black sheep can understand like okay i'm supposed to break family curses but then you can't even identify what those curses are and most of us could say the bare minimum like we got alcoholism in the family we got the you know uh you know divorce running our family but if we can really get to the deep deep core of certain things that have been traveling from mother to mother to mother father to father to father to the point of where we can be like okay now that I identify it how do I bind that in the name of Jesus how do I go ahead and and cover myself in the blood of the Holy Spirit to the point of where those things can't even fall in line with my kids and my kids kids because I have to teach them ultimately how to keep that that line of curses broken so we don't continue bad habits so these are things that i'll also be talking about in my podcast um one of the other things um which is honestly one of the biggest things that i'll probably be getting into is uh the spiritual meaning of colors and what i mean by that is that scientifically we know that colors make us feel a type of way that's why businesses will use colors the way that they use them reds greens yellows things like that to grab your attention and they all have a specific um meaning to them like if you think of green what's the first thing you're gonna think of is probably money if you think of blue the first thing you're probably gonna think of is probably the sky or water all of these things have a specific meaning to them and in the spiritual realm in my personal belief and I haven't been wrong any conversation that I end up having with individuals is that I believe that God created us in a world of color not only as a gift because that's an honor I I couldn't imagine being colorblind (laughs) but it's an honor to one already being able to be in a lifestyle full of color That's one reason why people, you know, who do the whole carnival and festivals and all of that, it comes with so much color and there's an energy behind those colors. There's also intention behind all of those colors as well. And I've gotten the opportunity and I'm still learning how colors are broken down and how they mean to our spiritual well-being. Um, how it helps us understand a level of love language when it comes down to the Holy Spirit. Colors also help you identify what you may be lacking in your lifestyle, um, which will lead into what you consume, meaning from the way that you eat, the things that you wear, um, the things that you end up producing art wise all of these things are falling lying into the spiritual meaning of color and um, these are things that I will definitely be getting into um, our next episode will actually be the introducing of purple and um, talking about the the top root chakra our crown chakra um, and what purple will represent or what always has it representing outside of royalty um and just to kind of give you a little insight um without going too too much because i'm gonna need y'all to tune in but purple is a representation of wisdom bravery and spirituality so if this is a color that you have been grabbing and gravitating to um This is a time frame where you're getting a lot of thought processes, uh, not just something that you feel, but you're you're actually starting to make choices, which creates you to be brave because a lot of choices that we we have to make are not easy whatsoever. They're a lot of them are uncomfortable to to make, and but when you have wisdom, which is a gift from God. 
um, this would allow you to make your your decisions um, accordingly. You know, it's something that you're not just rushing into. Um, so this is something that we will be talking about um, and that I will be getting into for our next episode. Um, I'm, I'm grateful that you guys are here on our first episode here uh, on Apply Pressure to Life. Um, but I need y'all to definitely stay tuned because next Monday we're going to go ahead and get into the shade purple and there's a lot to get into. You know, we have our lighter purples, our darker purples, you know, our mob purples. There's certain things that we really want to break down. And if this is a color that you've been gravitating, you're going to want to hear this. So I'm going to definitely need y'all to stay tuned so y'all can not miss any of this at all. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed getting to know a little bit of me. Right now, I'm in the chakra energy of orange. I am just joyful. I'm optimistic. I, of course, my my roller coaster doesn't stop, but this is an area and space where I am just excited to be able to be creative and just to be expressive. And I hope that you guys really enjoy this vibe that I'm giving you guys because it's it's brand new. It's a way that I've never done it before. One-on-one conversations and being in the moment is my thing. So to actually have to like record and do to a point of where I'm really pushing this is definitely new. So I definitely appreciate all of my listeners, all my subscribers and followers um, for staying tuned, for all of my clients, for being patient with my with my process i appreciate you guys and this is honestly for you guys so i want you guys if you haven't already please subscribe right now i'm on tiktok we're on uh we're on uh spotify right now we're also on uh youtube and i'm gonna need y'all to really stay tuned honestly because outside of instagram y'all gonna get the the vibes of what like nail salon talks is like and the you know the laughters and conversations that we get into and certain media conversations that we get into and it, it's really a vibe it really really is like a lot of people outside of getting their nails done you know they love getting their nails done don't get me wrong and make them feel a type of way but it really do be the vibe and i just want y'all to stay tuned because i'm gonna give y'all a whole new insight in 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 salon conversations like we already know what the vibes are like with the nail the hair salons and the barber shots we got that we got that locked down but they're not giving no shine to the nail techs and they really not giving no shine to the nail salons at all so i'm gonna just you know put that out there that y'all gonna get a little bit of something new forgive you know my 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 vietnamese (laughs) co-workers that will be in the back because you guys will hear them and my vietnamese people i love y'all but y'all loud as hell just as we is loud so you know ain't no judgment but i'm just letting y'all know you know they will be in the background but that will give the authenticity of where where we're at and the vibes that we're at so i'm gonna need y'all to stay tuned i appreciate y'all I love y'all, not only, you know, with God's love, but I just love y'all because I just got that much love to give. So I'm going to need y'all to pass on that love to the next person, all right? So I'm going to need y'all to keep on smiling, keep it locked, and keep applying pressure to life. This is Nikki Diamond. I'm out.